Can someone please uh, read this MCQ? A 70 year old gentleman presents to the clinic with complaints of chest pain on exertion. His past medical history includes hypertension for which he is on amlodipine. His current medication also includes simvastatin. On further questioning, he mentions that the chest pain is dull in nature and is relieved within a few minutes of rest. And he also states that he used his wife GTN and his symptoms were relieved. What is the single most appropriate treatment for this patient? Ivrabridine, atenolol, isosorbide mononitrate, ferropamil, and doxazosin. So let's just analyze this scenario. A 70-year-old gender may present to clinic with complaints of chest pain on exertion. So chest pain on exertion uh, that is relieved by glycyl trinitrate and also relieved with rest. So this makes a diagnosis of a stable angina. Now he is already taking a bloody pain, which is a? Dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. Yes, dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. So he is already taking calcium channel blocker. What is the single most appropriate treatment for this patient in these options? The beta blocker can be given now. Yes. Atenolol will be the answer because atenolol is a beta blocker. So he is already taking a calcium channel blocker. So he can be given atenolol. Another option was virapamil. But because he is already taking a calcium channel blocker, so no need to give. Uh, this will be So the answer here will be etinolol. And ivabradine is added after calcium channel blocker and beta blocker. If there's no response with these two drugs, then ivabradine can be tried. Another MCQ to make things a little clear is coming your way. Dr. Vijaya, can you please read this MCQ? A 65 year old patient who was currently diagnosed with stable angina visits his GP due to poor control of his symptoms. His current medications includes adenolol. The patient's allergy notes indicate that he had developed ankle edema when uh, tried on a PDP in the for hypertension, which of medication can be added to help control his symptoms. Deltaism, Rapamil, Simvestatin, and Lutipine are avoided. Can it be Rapamil? So, Dr. Vajia is saying it's Vrapamil. I have a pretty. Dr. Musarad is saying I have a pretty. That is already taking the beta blocker. That is etinolol. And he is a so patient of stable, stable angina. So, second drug. The symptoms are not improved, right? Yes. So the second drug we can add is Avrabradine. Why not Amlodipine? Why not? Uh, sir, because because he's already on Nifedipine, so which he had allergy with like an ankle edema. So yes, they both because he has, he has an allergy too. So first, remember that again, I'll tell you that Deltiasm and Virapamil uh, Dr. Vijaya, this explanation is for you. Deltiasm and Virapamil, both of them are cardioselective calcium channel blocker. They slow down the heart rate, so they can never be used with beta blockers such as atenolol. Never use a beta blocker And a non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker such as diltiazem and virapamil because they can cause a complete heart block 
which can be dangerous. So uh, after beta blocker, we could have prescribed him a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker such as amlodipine or nifedipine. But he was tried on nifedipine, but he still got symptoms. So that's why the one that we are left with is ivabradine. Because after beta blocker and calcium channel blocker, the drug that we can try for the treatment of angina pectus is ivabradine. <clears throat> so this was some points uh, that you need to remember have one in the treatment of angina pectoris now which other mcqs you want to discuss in cardiology yes sir sir one is of 52 years read that mcq yes yes you can yes a 52 years old gentleman with a history of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation to the clinic with palpitations. He has no other history of note and a recent uh, echocardiogram was normal. An ECG confirms fast atrial fibrillation. In the notes, you find a recent echocardiogram which reveals no indication of structural heart disease. What is the single most appropriate medication to manage her fibrillation? Digoxin, disopyramide, flecainide, procanamide, and sotalol. What is the answer? So you tell the answer uh, and explain. Aren't we looking at the wrong question or? Yes, yes, uh, the question is wrong. Let me find the right one. Fifty-two year old. Dr. Sambal? It's fifty-two years old. Okay. No, this is not the one. Uh, can, uh, share your screen. Uh, sir, I can set it up because it's in my. Drug which is can be used in the management of arterial fibrillation. So, can someone tell me the criteria for rate control and the criteria for rhythm in in the management of arterial fibrillation? What is the criteria for control and what is the criteria for rate control? Does someone remember it? When you will go for a rhythm control and when you will go for rate control? So if the patient age is above 65 years and he has a history of ischemic heart disease and he's asymptomatic, then you, we will go for rate control strategy. 
I'll repeat it again. Someone with age above 65 with a history of heart disease <clears throat> and asymptomatic. Then we'll go for the rate control strategy. What are the drugs that can be used to control rate in atrial fibrillation? Can someone answer this one? Beta blockers. Beta blockers, excellent. Calcium, calcium channel blockers. Beta blockers and channel blockers. Which calcium channel blockers which can be used in the uh, for uh, controlling the rate of the heart? Diltiazem. Diltiazem and virapamil. Uh, the non dihydropyridine yeah. calcium channel blockers. Yeah. Now, and what are the contraindications to the use of beta blockers in patient with atrial fibrillation? Asthmatic patients? Yes. In asthmatic patient, instead of beta blockers, we will use the shem channel block. Now, is hyperbradine used as well? Is it among the three? No, hyperbradine is not used. Only calcium channel blocker or a beta blocker, and there's a third drug which can be used to control rate in atrial fibrillation. And someone tell me that third drug? Digoxin. 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 What are the indication to use digoxin in patient with atrial fibrillation? With heart failure. Yes. Atrial fibrillation with heart failure, with signs and symptoms of heart failure, the drug that can be used is Digoxin. So, can someone repeat the indication for rate control strategy in atrial fibrillation? If a person age is greater than 65 and along with uh, the structural heart disease, then um, like asymptomatic, then we will go for the rate control. Yeah. And we do it by three drugs. That is, the first one is the beta blockers or calcium channel blockers or digoxin. If the person is asthmatic, then blockers, we can eat as him and beat up a milk. If the person is having heart failure, then we go for digoxin. So now reverse these indication. If the patient age is 65 years and there is no history of any heart disease, and the person is symptomatic, then, and the onset of symptoms is less than 48 hours, then we will go for a rhythm control strategy. Again, doctor. What? Again, can you repeat? So the factors that were favoring rate control were older than 65 years. heart disease, onset of symptoms is more than 48 hours and patient is asymptomatic. Now reverse these factors and if the patient is symptomatic, then we will go for a rhythm control strategy. And what are the two drugs that can be used for rhythm control in atrial fibrillation? Imiodrone and, and flaconide. Now, read this scenario again and tell me what will be the answer. Yes, sir. Uh, the person is 52 years. 
to find a recent echo with reveals no indication of structural heart disease. So second so one no is no of any heart disease and the patient age is less than 65 years of age. So in this scenario, you will go for a rhythm control. Now, what is the most appropriate answer? Flecainide. Yes, flecainide is that. For drug. rhythm control, we use flecainide and which other drug? Amiodrone. Okay, thank you. Sir, so amiodrone, if amiodrone is... and flecainide both are given then? No, either uh, amiodrone or a flecainide. Only one uh, will be given in the options. Okay. Thank so you. If either one of them is given, then you will use it. Can you repeat for so, the rate control, please? Rate control is patient older than 65. Patient with a history of ischemic heart disease patient who is asymptomatic and patient whose atrial fibrillation onset is more than 48 hours. Or simply you can say that a patient with a chronic atrial fibrillation. So what are the uh, um, management? Like first is beta blocker or Calcium? Yes, if patient is asthmatic, then calcium channel blocker. If patient is with heart failure, then radioxin. Okay. For rate control in patient with atrial fibrillation. Right. Which is the next step that uh, you so, want to discuss? So there, there was one MCQ in which there was an option of amir drone and uh, uh, adenosine. So I, yes, I click the one with the the one with the uh, an ECG. Yes, so I clicked on uh, amidron and I think answer was adenosine, something like let that. Let me let me share this MCQ with you. Thank you. So is this the MCQ you were talking about? Yes, yes, that's the one. So a 62 year old male with no past medical history of note is admitted to the emergency department with palpitations. So a young person with palpitation, whenever you get a question that have ECG in the option, First, try to make a diagnosis on the basis of the clinical scenario that is given. So it is written in the PLAB case that a young patient with palpitation, the most common arrhythmia that you will think of is supraventricular tachycardia. So now on the basis of scenario, we, we are suspecting SVT. Now let's confirm it on ECG. So two things you can appreciate in the ECG. ECG is that the person is having a tachycardia and the QRS complexes are narrow. So narrow complex tachycardia is SVT. Cannot appreciate any waves. You cannot tell if the wave that are showing Either they are P waves or either they are T waves. T waves are mostly buried in the P waves uh, in an SVT. So what is the difference between SVT and atrial fibrillation? Both of them are narrow complex tachycardia and both of them does not have a P wave. So how you are going to differentiate between these two? Who will tell me the difference between SVT and atrial fibrillation? So 
So in atrial fibrillation, there will be irregularly irregular heartbeat. Yes, yes, yes. QRS complexes will be irregular in atrial fibrillation. But here you can see that QRS complexes are re regular. They are placed at an equal distance from each other.